Dear viewers, is there a formula for success? Can ordinary people become winners? Is it actually possible to make anybody win? I think it's possible if we speak to Mr. Ram Kumar Sheshu. Warm welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Pleasure being here. This organization called Born to Win. That's right, Born to Win. So everybody is born to win or only Absolutely. some people who choose to come to you are born to win? Oh, no, 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 no. Everybody has in it himself or herself to become a winner. Okay. And, uh, you know, when you're born, mm. uh, nobody teaches you to talk. Mm. Nobody teaches you to walk. Nobody teaches you to recognize sound. Mm. All of these are winning traits. Mm. And fundamentally, it's my belief mm. and my organization's belief mm. that all of us, it doesn't matter if you're born in the you know, poorest hut in Ethiopia or the richest palace in Saudi Arabia, mm. but you all have, every one of us has, mm. those winning traits okay. that uh, we can bring to the fore at any point of time. How do you define this word win or winning? To me, the difference between winning and not doing so mm. is very simple. Okay. You know, if you can imagine the 100 meters race okay. in the Olympics, uh, it's fascinating, isn't it? Everybody mm. trains the same. Mm. Everybody puts in the same amount of effort. The diet is the same, the training is the okay. same. And the difference between the person who comes number one mm. and the eighth person in that race mm. is possibly a fraction of a second. Yeah. Right? Winning, I guess, is, a, is the ability for people mm. to understand that there is a slight winning edge okay. in everything that you do. Okay. You know? And it's that little difference, really, that okay. separates okay. people who win okay. from people who are yet to win. Okay. Is it uh, being ahead of others or uh, being better than others or having that difference that makes you superior to others? I think, you know, the, uh, the unfortunate context of winning yeah. is always in, in, in the sense that, you know, you're comparing yourself with somebody else, okay. right? But I think it is doing better for yourself. Mm. You know, it's, it's bettering your own performance okay. from last time. Okay. Okay, can you push yourself a little more? Okay. Can you compared bring to the fore fro compared to what you did previously? Okay. Mm. You know? So it's those little, little things that help you to win. What is this about what I should and what I can? Well, you know, I fundamentally believe that mm. each of us mm. chooses to behave in a particular way. Okay. Now, there are three levels that you can behave yourself in. Okay. Right? You can behave in what we call a must fashion. Mm. We can believe, behave in what I call a should fashion or a can fashion. Okay. Uh, just to give you an example, for instance, if, you know, if you're getting served by somebody in, let's say, a bank or something like that, mm. and if, let's say, you want to withdraw a thousand rupees, mm. right? Now, if you can tell that teller, Mm. Give me a thousand rupees, you know, you give a check for that. Okay. Now that guy can turn around and give you a used bundle of 10 rupee notes. Okay. And he's done his job. Okay. Now the same teller can turn around and say, sir, what notes do you want? Okay. The same teller can turn around and say, do you want five rupee notes? I have five rupee notes, 10 rupee notes, 50 rupee notes, 100 rupee notes. Okay. You what make notes are choice. you looking at? Yeah. And then, you know, supposing you were to say, okay, give me two fifty rupee notes and 900 rupee notes. Okay. He can take the trouble of counting those crisp notes and giving it to you. Okay. Obviously, the third person hmm. has really, really delighted you. Okay. Now, to each of us, whenever we transact anything with anybody in life, okay. we have a choice. Okay. Do we want to be like the first person hmm. who just does what he or she is supposed to do? Hmm. Or would you like to stretch yourself a little more? Hmm. Or would you like to go that extra mile hmm. and give that delight? Hmm. To the customer. Actually, winning is a delightful experience, Absolutely. not just for others who support Absolutely. you, but also to yourself. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. That's the fundamental thought. You know? okay. That when I win, mm. what I'm actually doing mm. is that I'm, I'm delighting myself first. Okay. You know? And in the process of doing it, mm. I'm pleasing myself. Okay. I'm happy. And that keeps you healthy, that keeps Absolutely. you Fit. in a state of happy mind. Absolutely. Okay, so in a world that's so competitive, yes. is it important that you're always comparing yourself to others, whether you want it or not, because you need to be a winner to be able to survive? Unfortunately, that is the way of comparing. That is the context that in is which the most context often in which we understand exactly, this word. Exactly. Uh, but whether you say that, you know, whether you're bettering yourself compared to what you are, uh, 
or whether you're improving yourself or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is that uh, are you pushing somebody behind so you can be ahead of them? Yes. Unfortunately, or mm -hmm. you know, fortunately today, mm -hmm. uh, what is happening is that people have understood another concept of winning, okay. which is what I'm trying to propagate. Mm -hmm. That winning is about win-win. Okay. You, know, you win, I win. I win. Okay. First of all, I need to make you win okay. for me to win. Okay. Okay. In in this so case, you, there you is a certain need to humility. Create an environment of winning. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So whether you're in an organization, okay. whether you're with your you cannot just customers. win alone. Absolutely. And the whole organization fails. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. That's Absolutely. really interesting. So the whole concept of winning now has to change to win-win. Okay. But actually, this word "win" has a negative connotation. Yes, it does. Uh, at least the way you understand it, because yes. if you're a little philosophical yes. or spiritual, yes. because winning is about uh, competition. Absolutely. Winning is about the materialistic world. Yes. Winning is about uh, taking something from somebody who is not able yes. to do it. Yes. Yes. So, because winning also has sometimes to do with uh, maybe you having had a better training, better sure. opportunities. Sure. 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 Right. So. Sure. All of that is true. Okay. Okay. But I think, you know, today we've moved, mm. okay? Uh, you know, in the 80s, mm. uh, winning meant win-lose. Okay. Okay, because we were in what I call the information age. Okay. Then in the 90s, mm. we moved to what I call the knowledge age. Okay. Where again, knowledge was important. Okay. And therefore, again, there was still an element of win-lose. Okay. Today, I fundamentally believe we are in the wisdom age. Okay. Okay. And in the wisdom age, mm. there is no way that I can win okay. if you lose. So I need to first of all and ensure that, that you winning win. is also of no worth or value Absolutely. if the others lose exactly. all the time. Exactly. Okay. Because the world has moved okay. from being transaction oriented. Okay. Okay, to relationship oriented. Okay. But uh, does your theory work the best in a very commercial environment? Absolutely. Huh? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the clients that I work with right now okay. across the country, okay. they're all people who have had their you know, the human capital of those organizations mm. work, mm. understand and imbibe these concepts to win-win. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, they've, they've had transformations happening. Okay. Complete. But uh, you were inspired by a saying by Mahatma Gandhi. Jai. That's right. Okay. That's right. Uh, so That's that a sounds a little anachronistic. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest with you, yeah. uh, I have no doubt in proclaiming this or no hesitation in proclaiming uh -huh. this, that I'm a huge fan Okay. of his thought process, of his thinking. Okay. Especially he had something so, to say about everything. Absolutely. But you know, the point is that his early thought processes mm. were absolutely fantastic. Mm. And even in his context of winning was very interesting. You know, okay. He says that if you can bridge the gap between what you do mm. and what you're capable of doing, mm. you have the power mm. to, to, address, solve a lot of to solve a lot of problems. Okay. So that's, you know, that's exactly where I you know, got inspired saying, this is interesting because you know, it's talking about something which you have mm. and your own potential. Okay, but this uh, born to win has an edge over uh, born to lead, right? Because it's not yes. just sufficient that if you can lead, That's but right. you need to win too. Correct. Okay. Leadership is, leadership is the art of getting people to move from one point to another point. Okay. Right? Okay. Winning is another thing altogether. Okay. Is to get them to enjoy that process. Okay. But there's this aspect of gain yeah. that is involved in the process of winning. Sure it is. Sure. Okay. And I, I, I think we shouldn't be so apologetic about that. So we are not just talking that. about uh, fair winning. It can be, it can be oh, yes. real but aggressive winning also. Yes, it can. But you see, any amount of unfair winning, okay. I mean, just to use your word. And that's word, not winning at all? Not, not at all. Because, you know, that's just one transaction. Mm. I can, you know, I can cheat you once. Okay. I can but was there a once. process of delight also? Because if it was ever an unfair win, I'm sure that it doesn't delight you so much. So I absolutely. think it's directly absolutely. proportional to the delight that you can get out 100%. of it. hundred percent, absolutely. Okay, so and you've been working with a lot of companies now. Yes. What exactly do you offer? Well, we, we offer a number of structured interventions with uh, okay. four organizations. Mm. What you basically say is a mm. practical uh, opportunity for ordinary people to win, is it? Yes. Something like that. Absolutely. Uh -huh. You see, the whole idea is that every one of us, mm. okay, uh, has it in us. And I think, you know, somewhere, mm. uh, some of the practices that we've been following, okay. some of the habits that we've acquired, possibly start layering us, you know.
So the idea is can you remove some of these layers mm -hmm. okay, and get back to your basic self mm -hmm. and you surely surely can you know then do okay. what you are meant to do. The conventional doing. understanding of winning is that winners are always lonely people or rather they stand alone. Yes. Uh, but yes. Uh, the concept that you are talking about uh, is a little opposed to it. Absolutely. Because you are talking about inclusive processes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Winning, winning is about everybody getting together and winning. Okay. Okay. Winning is not you know an, the context of winning okay. uh, as a as a concept mm. okay is always from war or sport mm. and in war or sport mm. there has to be a loser there has to be a winner okay that's that's perfectly normal okay okay that's the traditional that's understanding that's the traditional of. understanding okay today i'm talking of a different concept of winning completely mm. you know it's not the old concept of winning mm. where if i have to win winning. exactly we have okay. to win as a nation I mean, okay. you know, we have to win as or a rather long-term winning, absolutely sustained Sustain, winning. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to sustain it. Okay. Absolutely right. You've got to sustain it. It's long-term. Yeah. You know, it, it cannot be transaction-oriented anymore. Okay. okay, it's not like one act and you won. Absolutely, one. Yeah. absolutely. You know, it, it's got to I mean, be. Something and also, which is sometimes continuous. you may know whether you won or lost uh, after a very long time. Exactly. Uh, exactly. In retrospect, exactly. When you analyze it, That's you right. may have. Uh, right. Actually, seen one. Absolutely. You see, if if you okay. look if you look at if you look at each one of us, mm. we live in a particular world of our own. Mm. Okay, and that world could be inhabited by you know family, friends, associates, mm. neighbors, etc., etc., etc. What is the point of my winning okay. if everybody doesn't enjoy okay. my winning? Okay, you know if I've but like in life something. itself, at one point um, in life when you stand at the edge. And when you look back and you see whether you actually won or lost, <laughs> yes, that is something which you know you you kind of uh, do a action replay of your whole life. Okay, uh, as it as it. But were. do organizations do that? You know, at the end of the whole thing, that you know they look back and see that you know whether the whole process of winning was uh, was was meaningful or was it like these small transactions of winning that have taken place? I, I wish they do that more often. Okay. I wish they do that more often. Okay. You know, if, if they do that more often, mm. I think then you will get this whole concept of delightful winning. Okay. You know, you'll get this whole concept of responsible winning. Okay. Uh, I wish more and more organizations do that. Okay. Sure. I think they should. Uh, but it's not at only at the unit level in a society yeah. or at a micro level, but you yeah. also have understood this at a very macro level. Yes. Because of also your interest in politics and uh, citizenship sure. and uh, sure. social uh, engagement sure. of an individual. Sure. Sure. Correct. Well, yes. I th I think it's it's important today as mm. an organization. Mm. You know, people like you, people like me. Mm. I think it's very important that we need to engage every section of society. Okay. That is something which is very very important. Okay. And some of these concepts that I'm talking about mm. right now. I mean, without understanding the environment, how do you survive in it? Exactly. Because all these things are factors that influence Absolutely. your environment. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's very very important that you know we should take this to a larger, mm. you know. Place. Yes. Like you're talking about, you know, training politicians. About, Absolutely. You know, I, I, how they can keep winning all sure, the time. Sure. Mm. And from a win-win, you know, perspective. Yeah, yeah. Where you not, win not and your constituency wins too, Absolutely. or your supporters win Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Not just look at you know a, a winning from an electoral perspective or one year of winning and that's it. You know, mm. so you do whatever you can in that one year. Okay. But look at it saying that how can my entire constituency win? How can my entire constituency benefit from the fact that I, that I'm there? And how can you look at it from a long-term perspective? Okay, with an economics background uh, to winning, uh, do you feel it was uh, some kind of a natural progression? Oh yes, <laughs> oh yes, certainly. I okay. think the economics, uh, you know, that I that I learned, uh -huh. especially when I mastered in economics and things like okay. that, that really helped me get e an understanding. Economics, economics, and econometrics. That's okay. right. You know, it, I did it at a time when uh, the uh -huh. subject itself was not known. Okay. You know. And uh, very, very often it would be called eco tricks. Okay. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tricks in economics, but uh, yes, econometrics is the mm. science of putting in statistics, mm. you know, into economics and trying to understand mm. how that works. Your greatest right. interest has been in marketing, and you yes. worked with advertising also. That's right. That's right. Uh, I've spent a number of years in and advertising. And you believe in turning around uh, yes. companies, and now you're turning people around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Very well, nicely put, I guess. Okay. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, I love particular challenges. Company you turned it around in just 15 months. That's right. I love challenges. Okay. Uh, I've loved challenges. But every time, even even market, though there's a science to it, doesn't respond to such aspirate 
aspirational, uh, what do you say? Absolutely. Efforts, right? Oh, yes. Because, oh, yes. Uh, I'll tell you something interesting. Sometimes as, as, uh, as abstract as um, even astrology. <laughs> sure it is. Sure it is. It's even more abstract. Yeah. But yes, I think, you know, uh, the market is looking for three things. Mm -hmm. One, it is looking for a service that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Two, it is looking for a provider mm -hmm. who's honest. Okay. Okay. And three, it is looking for a service that can include a lot more. You know, which is inclusive. Mm -hmm. And I've been very fortunate mm -hmm. that whenever... And the bottom line is that you have the right people who are working hard. Absolutely. So, you know, you include them. Yeah, yeah. You know, you include them into what you're doing yeah. and things like that. Uh -huh. And so long as you're able to get that kind of a service together, okay. um, you certainly, certainly can uh, turn any situation around. Okay. And any kind of a startup can be very, very successful. Okay. So how did you start this company with two other friends of yours? That's right. Uh, yeah. We've been friends for, you know, more than 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been talking to each other for quite some time. Okay. And my colleagues, a gentleman called Ramki, who's based in Chennai, mm -hmm. another gentleman called Dhirendra or Drin, who's based mm -hmm. here in Bangalore. Okay. Uh, I was in Bombay for a long time and you know so the three of us got together and mm -hmm. all three of us are very very passionate about this entire uh, okay. issue okay. of helping people win mm -hmm. and actually what drives us what you know what makes us very very passionate mm -hmm. is that can we take these two students okay you know can we take this entire winning abilities winning traits and can okay. we take it to students okay so we do a lot of work right now with students okay you know people some who thousands of children absolutely 9 mm. 10 11 12th class okay. uh, students mm. even some cases some college students okay and uh, that is something which is you know we are very very passionate about mm. because it is our belief that we can build a generation of winners okay okay and we're all the time looking for you know adding on more people like us Mm. And today we have a number of people who are associated with us okay. across the country. I think we're very privileged that uh, some of these people are very, very senior people. Okay. And they work with us. And all of us are extremely passionate about this okay. cause, saying, can we go out? But you call them? this result-oriented. Yeah. But uh, how much result can you actually measure at the end? One of the things that I advise everybody mm. Okay. is that before you embark on any program of this kind mm. okay you must know what exactly are you looking for okay that's something which is very very important mm. and if you can't measure it, it cannot then give it you can't magical solutions yes but sometimes you can get those kinds of solutions okay. but, but if the you're issue, looking for it absolutely but you must know very clearly what you want to get okay and you know how would you want to measure it because if you can't measure it then you know it's like summer lightning you know mm. lots of noise lots of sound mm. uh, lots of no light. rain but no rain and no use. I mean, you know, you actually get blinded uh, after yeah. that. So you need to know what you're looking for. Okay. You need to know how you can measure that. Mm. And once you're clear about that, mm. then I think you can just go out and do whatever you want. For instance, some of the kids that we work with, mm. some of the young people that we work with, uh, it's been a, you know, it's been a very satisfying change okay. for them. Young people today, unfortunately, uh, have over a period of time you know, been told no so many times mm. that they have, they've, you know, they've started condensing their dreams. They don't want to articulate what their dreams are. Okay. They don't know how to get to their dreams. It's, it's not a world of possibilities, just a world of impossibilities. Absolutely. Because everywhere you're told that this is not possible, sure. that's not possible, Absolutely. it's not for you, Correct. it's for somebody else. That's right. So somewhere... Do you know shocking thing, Deepak? Mm. I've heard recently mm. that a child before the age of 12 hears the word no mm. or variations of the word no 80,000 times. <laughs> which is sufficient 20 to times stop anybody. Yeah. Absolutely. Can you, you imagine can stop that a train with it, I'm sure. Absolutely. Can you imagine that conditioning? Yeah. You know, can you imagine someone being told no, don't sit there, don't do that. Why are you watching TV? Don't sit there. Don't eat that. Don't, you know, we unconsciously as parents okay. keep saying no, no, no. Is it because we are afraid of uh, repercussions, results? And most often that we are quite uh, happy and ensconced in our own security. Yeah, I think because, that... Because, you know, I mean, people don't want to experiment because yeah. experiment means risks. Correct. And, you see, the uh, biggest people problem... people would rather, you know, I mean, blame fate. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, Absolutely. check their... Um, uh, charts. Uh, Absolutely. The astrological charts okay. and the numerological charts. <laughs> but, you know, the, the issue really is that people are scared of failure. Okay. You know? 
And uh, I think that really, really plagues and people. And in spite of that famous line, failure being the stepstone of success, and that's all for Napoleon or, correct, uh, or correct. for uh, Lincoln, exactly. not for us. No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay. it's, it's, it's good to read. Yeah. But, you know, I don't want, I want to cocoon my child, yeah, yeah. you know. Or I want to cocoon my child. A good my job, an Absolutely. IT job, or maximum go to the U.S., Absolutely. build a home. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, our dreams are very, very small. Mm. Okay, Can you become a small you know, person too? Exactly. Mentally you do, you know. Uh, all of this, some of the problems that plague us, mm. you know, for instance, as a society today, are really emanating from this specific issue, mm. you know, that our dreams are and small. And people most often do not have faith in themselves. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you do not uh, believe that you are capable of dreaming big, I yeah. mean, how can you even dream big? Right. You know, I, I led a very, very large research before I started Born to Win. Okay. And this was about three years, and, you know, I, I researched success oh. for, across the country. Okay. And I found three things that hold people back. Mm. You know, there is someone who I believe is successful mm. and someone who's not yet successful. Okay. I don't believe in the word failure. Mm. Okay, So I say mm -hmm. I classify them as not yet successful. Yeah. Three issues. One is a lack of self-confidence. Okay. Okay? We're very aggressive. You know, our dress is aggressive, our technology is aggressive, but at the core is still a lack of confidence. Mm. The second is that we have a very high fear of failure. Okay. Very, very high fear of mm. failure. And the third mm. is an inability to focus on a set of priorities. Okay. Okay. These three things, according to me, yeah. are really, really what are plaguing. That's how they talk about, you know, uh, if you learn cycling before you are old enough, it's okay because, you know, you're not afraid of falling. Falling, that's right. Okay. As you grow older, even that's a scratch right. makes such a difference Absolutely. to you. Absolutely. Yeah. And to go back to that. So research, you're working with children is such a, an important thing because Absolutely. I think you can actually get them to think. Exactly. And react and exactly. respond. Exactly. And that research that I, I just go back to that research for a minute. That research that we did mm. showed us one very, very important issue, mm. which is that if you can think that you can do it, mm. then you will do it. Oh, okay. Okay. Power of positive, Absolutely. affirmative thinking. Affirmative thinking. Which you actually experienced in your own yes. life. Absolutely. <laughs> many Absolutely. times. Absolutely. Many, many times. Okay. And you many believe times. in it completely. 100%. Okay. You know? uh, like, for instance, even coming here today. Uh, okay, it was, was nothing but an affirmation saying that, yes, I can actually put this schedule together. And it is together. possible. 100%. Sometimes our negative thoughts stop us from doing a lot of things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Correct? You know, like you, you, you think of something bad happening to you, there's more chance of it happening to oh you, yes. right? Oh, yes. You know, uh, I keep telling parents, mm. if you want to correct your child, if you want to be careful about your child, then don't tell your child, be careful. Okay. Okay? Tell your child, hold on. Mm. Okay, give him a positive stroke rather than a negative stroke. Okay. I mean, if a child is driving a, you know, riding a bicycle, don't say be careful. I'm sure the child will fall. Okay, but and uh, isn't that a problem with our society too? That you know, we would rather be happy uh, making a negative statement about everything. Yes. If if uh, somebody is to come, uh, is it possible they may not come? Instead of saying That's right. when are they going to come? Correct. Correct. Like even these simple statements. You know, right. most often these. Statements are formed with a lot of negativity. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So and uh, that 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 really is a serious issue. You know, when you're inviting someone home for dinner, yeah, I hope you'll come. I mean, you know, you can, yeah. so you're already building in an yeah. excuse saying the guy won't come. Yeah, yeah. You know? So so it's, it's like you're preparing yourself. Exactly. So there's no heart in it. Absolutely. So going to the things that you've done personally, particularly your involvement with the Rotary organization. Right. Yeah. As a Rotarian, you're quite popular, aren't you? Yes. Uh, I started my involvement with civil society okay. as a member of an organization called Roundtable. Okay. Round and you were a trainer That's of right. that organization. Roundtable, yes. You're I've going all over the country. That's right. Okay. <laughs> and uh, therefore, when I joined Rotary, okay. uh, my entire experience in Roundtable really came to the fore oh. and uh, therefore one of the you know one of the reasons why you join an organization like Rotary is mm. to give something back to society okay and uh, Rotary has been very kind to me I also am a member of a great club the Rotary Club of Bangalore at the district level mm. I am a I'm the deputy trainer mm. so Rotary has been very kind. You have a lot of dreams I and do. you dream big all the time huh? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. I dream big and I help people dream big. Okay. I I want them to dream big. And you've written uh, a few booklets too about... Uh, I haven't written citizen. any booklets, but I've written a lot of uh, small articles. Okay, and about citizenship awareness. That's right. 
That's right. Okay, and That's right. Uh, were these fulfilling experiences? Absolutely. Because you have a lot of uh, passion about uh, um, citizen society development. 100%. You see, I think uh, we owe it to give it back okay. to people. Okay. And we owe it to ourselves mm -hmm. more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I'm, I'm a great believer in that fact. Okay. That, you know, some of us are very fortunate. Mm -hmm. We are people who have seen what can be. Okay. And we are not stuck in the quagmire of what is. Okay. And I think it's important that those of us who have been able to do it, people like you, people like me, mm -hmm. and so many of your viewers, mm -hmm. I think we owe it to ourselves mm -hmm. more than it to the society. Mm. that we need to start talking to people about what can be, mm. you know, not get stuck in what okay. is. What I've seen of you is that you're quite methodical. Is that sure. true? Well, um, yes, uh, I, can, I have been told I can, that. I can see a lot of systems in uh, sure, the sure. way you work. Sure. Is that sure. the reason why you're able to do a lot of things? Absolutely. And I, plan and I think my when time. you don't understand this word planning or plan, uh, that's when you cannot win too. Well, yes, you need to know what you want to do in life. Okay. That there is no and doubt about it. As you about. said, you need to focus. Yeah, you to, need to focus on To be that. able to focus, Absolutely. you need to know your potential. Absolutely. Put your resources uh, Absolutely. You know, laid out. Absolutely. Okay, and use them according to a oh, plan. Oh, yes, oh, yes. And you need to plan your time out. Okay. And uh, I lead a fairly busy life. Mm. My plate is full, mm. but I'm all the time ready I to sleep take on the more right time too. <laughs> Well, yeah, surely. <laughs> okay. If I can. You travel a lot. I do. I do travel a bit. Okay. Uh, so, mm, I, I, the, I move around the in country. In the process of doing all this, uh, do you feel that uh, you were born to win? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm born to win. And you're one. And uh, well, in I'm the process winning. of winning, winning. Oh, because okay. I, I, I seriously believe that, you know, and this, making this other is people win, you're winning yeah, too. That's right. This is a journey that I've embarked upon, okay. and uh, I don't think I can ever say two things. Mm -hmm. uh, one, that I've learned everything that there is to learn. Okay. I'm a constant learner. And uh, second, that you know, there is always tomorrow some more people that I can help. Okay. You know? And uh, that, that is something which drives me forward every day. On that note, I must thank you for having come to this show. My pleasure entirely.